Hey everybody, Nettie Owens here with Sapari Solutions and today I've brought with me Chris Westfall. We're continuing our discussion of what every business owner needs to know right now and we're digging into Chris's topic of expertise which is leadership communication and what better talk but right now um, to be talking about than leadership communication. Um, Chris is the national U the U.S. National Elevator Pitch Champion. I want to know how you earn that award, so you're going to have to explain that one. Okay. An internationally recognized expert on leadership communication, he's helped launch over five dozen businesses, and he's the publisher of seven books. His latest is called Leadership Language. Welcome. Thank you so much, and thank you for that introduction. Yeah, a lot of people ask me about that. What is this National Elevator Pitch Champion thing? And it actually is a, a contest that was conducted a few years back. And um, to make a long story short, I had to record a video of my elevator pitch, get votes on social media, and and actually, Nettie, in the voting, I actually came in second place. Uh, an oh, wait, entrepreneur well, in Atlanta. with an electoral college, is that how you won? <laughs> I think so. I think it was. <laughs> And funny, funny thing, Pennsylvania was the swing state. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I joke. Uh, oh, that was perfect. I came in second in the voting, but the folks that put the contact test together, a fellow by the name of Jeffrey Hazel, who's a good friend of mine and some others. I mean, he became a friend of mine after I won the contest. Uh, they said, listen, second place in the voting, but first place with us. We watched oh, your really? video and you're the national champ. And uh, wow. that, that kind of launched my career for me, really. That's fantastic. I mean, I was thinking any anybody who wins the elevator pitch contest basically wins all the clients. So, you know, right? That's the <laughs> well, it's just an award. It's not magic. I know. <laughs> well, if you can communicate well, this is my point. If you can communicate well, then it goes really far to help you uh, to help you find and share what you do with others, and then help them understand how you can help. So, True. that seemed like a, a good place to go. So let's talk and kind of uh, explore this idea of leadership communication, um, especially around presentations, which a lot of a lot of folks who weren't making presentations now are. They're going online. They're doing um, a lot more in this space. What do you see are some of the like mistakes that folks are making in this in this space? How could we do it better? The thing that the new normal requires, right? This great pause. The new normal, call it whatever you mm -hmm. wish, is adaptability. Mm -hmm. uh, a willingness to look at things like presentations and communications in a new way because we're not face to face. Right. And we have to be able to rethink what PowerPoint means. We have to rethink what connection means. And in the in the context of leadership, so that folks that are watching this, you know, something that you can try right now to help mm -hmm. improve your leadership skills is uh, written right here on this card. <laughs> and and this is this is the thing you know because and, and you've probably heard in in remote work articles and things like that experts come forward and they say you've got to over communicate you know in, in this time when when life goes online you've got yeah. to communicate well the, a lot of folks think that that means broadcasting more and talking more it actually means more of this and, and i'm going to so, say what's on that card in case somebody's just doing the audio of this if they're listening. So the card says yeah. listening. <laughs> the card says listening. Yes. And and so what what I think people need to understand is a strategy that I call it's a very simple strategy. It's called five finger management and it works like this. You take five fingers and you put them together like this and then you do this. <laughs> Cover your mouth. <laughs> and for the audio recording, yes, I'm covering my mouth with my five fingers. Yeah. We, it seems to me that the biggest challenge that leaders have right now is conveying these three words, these three simple words, and here they are. I hear you. Mm. Oh I hear God. you. I just got the chills because it's that, that is the thing that everyone needed to hear when, when the pandemic started, right? I hear that you're afraid. I hear that you don't understand what's happening. I hear that, you know, just that that listening, and then um, as that changed, and uh, the Black Lives Matter movement has started, the even even more so, right? I mm -hmm. hear you. I hear where you are. I hear your struggle, or hear your excitement. Like whatever it is, you know. Wow, um, super powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
it's vital. It's vital that we that we do not just say those words, but that we live those words. And mm -hmm. because I hear you is the first step towards I stand with you. I see your point of view. And uh, I, I think that that's that's vital on so many fronts. And I'll let I'll let the listeners <laughs> choose how, how they wish to interpret it. But, yeah, see what you can do to say I hear you and mean it. Where do you see this working out really well? I mean, do you feel like there are some businesses that are like, or people, individuals that exemplify what you're talking about, that are listening well, that, you know, that are using those three words? You know, one of the companies that that has really seemed to get it right in the working from home world, the world that we're in is mm -hmm. Twitter. Twitter and and their CEO Jack Dorsey has gotten a lot of press about it uh, and and I think the reason that they've been successful is that uh, managing a remote workforce is nothing new mm -hmm. for Twitter. It's something that they've had a plan in place uh, for years, but. Right. Uh, being able to be deliberate about working from home and really taking some time to consider what what has changed and what changes mm -hmm. when you can't be in the office when you can't be face to face, and and companies that I admire what what they're doing certain leaders that I know of they are uh, scheduling informal get-togethers at, mm -hmm. at Wednesday nights at eight p.m. and it's, right. it's a Zoom it's a Zoom meeting but it's an mm -hmm. opportunity to talk about kids and and family and those kinds of issues. And, and companies have to be deliberate and, and be formal about scheduling informal get togethers. Other companies that are doing smart stuff, they're, they're actually turning to inventive ideas. Like there's a company called water cooler trivia. That's okay. an online trivia company. And, and yeah. they're helping companies to use games, gamification and trivia to build rapport and stuff like that. And, and it may sound silly, but it, something like that can make a big difference when it comes to connection, camaraderie and teamwork. Well, I've heard here in Pittsburgh of um, a musician actually that's become known as like the Zoom musician and he comes and plays live music for your Zoom meeting to, you know, to, to infuse that that level of connectedness that you don't normally have. Mm -hmm. and, and actually he's done really well. And he ended up uh, doing some, uh, I guess, uh, some music for one of the restaurants here in town along, you know, in, along with the other the meetings and stuff that he was doing. So mm. being innovative um, right now in this space really goes back to that idea of adaptability and then of listening, like what, what are you hearing people need or maybe listening to what's not being said, you know, about what people might need right now. Um, so how do you kind of foster this um, engagement as people are working from home? There's certainly, you, you, you've made a few suggestions that I think are really powerful. Um, anything else that we could be thinking about, looking for? Mm. This is going to sound counterintuitive, but uh, in the importance of, when we talk about the importance of listening, there is uh, a phrase that you need to ignore. There are seven okay. words that we have to ignore, and here they are. That's the way we've always done. Things. Oh my gosh, like a dagger to my heart, right? This <laughs> like the, the anticipation, am I, am I, am I right? right? Oh. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because that that is the old ways don't work. And when I'm talking about the old ways, I'm talking about December of 2019. Right, yesterday. You know, just yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. There, there's just been such a a fast learning curve, uh, a, a a fast evolution. I think you know we we thought that we could do things incrementally but then suddenly we had to move home we had to bring our workforce home we had to become global we had to become connected and there's been a lot of um opportunity there but at the same time the idea that what worked before is going to work now is just uh laughable and it won't work in the future either think the whole landscape has changed no the future of work requires innovation and you know and it was 2018 when PwC came forward with a survey where they asked CEOs what the top qualities were that they, they looked for mm -hmm. in employees and in leaders. And the two top characteristics were creativity and innovation, mentioned by 77% of CEOs in the survey. So creativity and innovation, and that was 2018. Right. I'll think about where we are today. And if your organization is not tapping into training and learning and opportunities to help harness creativity, to help, and I'm not talking about arts and crafts, right? I'm right. talking about the process of creation. How do you identify something new and how do you bring forward the, the innovation that's inside your company? Because that's what the future of work requires. 